the Confession and Forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all and also with you. Let us pray. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your spirit to know those things that are right. And by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. Here ends the reading. The Gospel According to Matthew Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death, and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. God's grace and peace to you, my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Amen. Isaiah writes, Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stone and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. You know, the wineries all along the West Coast have been making the news these past weeks. First, it was the smoke from all the fires that hung over the tender crop, undoubtedly changing the flavor of the wine that is to come. 
And then in the past few days, we have heard reports of all the fires in California that are destroying whole vineyards. On Wednesday morning, it was announced that 80,000 people were forced to flee their homes and businesses because of the fires. What heartache for all of those folks. Well, several years ago, I traveled with some of my family members to San Diego. And one evening, we had a wonderful dinner at a winery. It was absolutely beautiful. And the expanse of this winery was very impressive, many, many acres. The landowner had made a great investment in his winery, including a fancy restaurant and places for people to stay when they were on vacation. It involved lots of time and dollars and loving care. Along with it came the expectation that once these plants had grown and the fruit was ready for harvest, there would be nothing but the finest of big, fat grapes and nothing but the finest of wines. If you like wine, you can almost taste it. Rich and pure, sweet and dry, Chablis, Merlot, Zinfandel, Riesling. There are so many kinds to suit your palate. And then comes the harvest time. You can almost see the party taking place at the har as the harvest is completed. Friends and family gather. The musicians are busy making song. The cooks have been in the kitchen all day. A pig is roasting over the open fire. Chickens are being grilled and dancers get into the wine vat. To the sounds of music, they begin to pounce on those grapes, squashing them, turning them into juice and loving every moment of this harvest festival. I think that is how any landowner would dream of the harvest taking place, with joy with joy at the harvest, sweet, succulent grapes would be turned into the sweetest of wines. Only according to Isaiah, the harvest yields nothing but wild grapes. Small, bitter, wild grapes, not suitable for making anything. And God, who is the owner of this vineyard, is brokenhearted. You see, God didn't plant a vineyard as much as God planted a people, a people set aside to be followers of the one true God, a people who were to be a light to other nations, a people who were to show the world what it meant to follow the one and only God with their whole beings. Only God in God's graciousness also gave the people a free will the will to make their own decisions, to be their own persons, and as a result, selfishness and greed, discrimination and hate ended in bloodshed. God in the way of justice and righteousness. Instead of taking care of the widows and orphans, the poor and the oppressed, those without work and losing their homes and everything they have, the leaders chose to put themselves first. They bought big, expensive cars, gas guzz guzzlers. They had their yachts and their mansions. They had absolutely everything they could ask for, but they had no heart or compassion for those in need. They yield nothing but small, bitter, wild grapes that made God's mouth just pucker. So in our gospel for today, the vineyard seemed to be doing fine, only the tenants didn't want to share the proceeds of the harvest with the owner, with the very one who had given them their jobs so that they could work the land and harvest the crop and give them everything they needed in daily life. Instead of giving the land owner his fair share, they beat and stoned and even killed those servants who had come to collect the landowner's share of the products. And when the landowner sent his only son to collect the harvest, the tenants decided that if they killed him, then all the inheritance would be theirs to keep. The landowner has every right to punish the tenants 
for their refusal to pay him his due, and every right to destroy them, even put them to death for their treatment of his servants and for the murder of his son. This is what one would expect the landowner to do. It is what the people who were gathered around Jesus expected him to do. And yet, in the end, this parable isn't about the wicked tenants or Pharisees who were always trying to find fault with Jesus, nor is it about us. Oh, yes, we're in the story. We may want to point our fingers, you know, the pointy fingers at those who killed the prophets, who made their those who killed the prophets and who made their lives miserable. We may also want to point our fingers at the religious leaders of Jesus' time, the upright Pharisees who knew the law to the T and entrusted the Romans, entrusted the Romans to put Jesus to death. Yes, we may want to point our fingers at all of those folks. But when we do, at least three more fingers, you know, the three, they point back at us, don't they? We are in this story as well. Yet in truth, this story is about God. God, the one who entrusted us with all good things. God, the one who, even when disappointed by what we do with our blessings, yet comes to us in love. God, the one who weeps over the injustices of the world, yet who embraces those who fall short and promises to never, ever give up on anyone, not even us. Not even us when we refuse to recognize others, all others, as God's beloved children. That is hard to do some days, but all people are God's beloved children. So what will we do? Will we hoard our blessings or are we going to share them? Will we embrace those in need or are we going to shun them? Will we finally reach out to the Christ we perceive in our neighbor or only come to worship the Christ depicted in our stained glass windows? To be clear, Eternal salvation does not hang in the balance in how we answer these questions. God, who loves wicked tenants, Pharisees, overly zealous evangelists, and painfully comfortable Christians alike, has already seen to that. Because here is the truth that all of us good Lutherans know. We are saved by grace through faith for Christ's sake. For Christ's sake, still and always. This is not so much a matter of our souls being saved as the quality and character of our lives as Christians. You see, God loves us unabashedly <clears throat> and shamelessly. And when we realize that it was for us that God risked everything in sending Jesus to this earth, into the vineyard of this world, only to be crucified by those who did not understand the heart and the soul of God. Then we are free to live with hope and courage and generosity. When, let me say that again, when we realize that it was for us that God risked everything in sending Jesus to this earth. For us, then we are free to live with hope and courage and generosity. Having been healed, we can now offer healing to others. Having been reconciled, we can now be instruments of reconciliation. Having tasted the mercy of God's justice, we can risk ourselves in working for greater justice for others. And having been blessed beyond measure, we can be a blessing to those around us. May we be good tenants. May it be so. Amen.
the prayers of the people. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, you call us to work for peace and justice in your vineyard. Refresh the church with your life that we may bear fruit through work and service. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for the abundant harvest of the earth. Bless and care for those whose hands bring the fruits of the earth to the tables of all who hunger. May we be inspired by your servants who care deeply for your creation. We remember especially all those who work in food banks supplying the hungry with food. We give special thanks for Steve Curry, manager of the Southeast Tacoma Nourish Food Bank, and his staff who care deeply for all those who come seeking food for their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Curb the impulses of greed and pride that lead us to take advantage of others. Grant that world leaders seek the fruits of the kingdom for the good and welfare of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain all who suffer from, with the promise of new life. Assured of your presence, heal our pain and suffering, and equip us to embrace all bodies aching for wholeness of mind, body, and soul. We pray for all those affected by COVID-19, for Liz Peden and all residents of Manor Care, for all those in the Mace family who have been exposed, and for our president who has now been hospitalized for COVID, and for his wife and for all the staff at the White House, all those who have uh, just been diagnosed. We pray for their healing and well-being. We also pray for all those who are ill, for all those who grieve, for all those suffering from isolation, for all those who have lost employment, for those who are unable to pay rent or mortgage payments, for those who have no health insurance, for those who are hungry, for all those who are despairing. You, O oh Lord, know who they are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all managers in our community and for all who seek employment. Give hope and a future to those who lack meaningful work, those who have been marginalized or abused in the workplace, and those who desire new opportunities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear now the prayers of the people. We pray this day for Pastor Linda as she deals with multiple health issues. We pray that her lungs might be healed. And we pray for wisdom for those who are treating her. And we pray for healing for her. We pray for Bobby Wicklander as she treated for cancer. Surround her with your healing presence, we pray. We pray for Carl Scott as he seeks answers for his weight loss. And we pray for Elaine's friend, Sue, who lost her daughter, Tara, on Thursday evening. We pray, Lord God, for comfort and consolation for Sue. We pray for this congregation in a time of transition. Give us wisdom and grace as we serve the greater community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call upon you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Holy God, our bread of life, our table, and our food. You created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abram and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. When you do this, remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus made no restrictions on this table, so neither do we. Let us share together in this meal the body of Christ given for you. the blood of Christ shed for you. Having been strengthened by this meal, let us receive the blessing. Mothering God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you in the way of truth and life.
service today, I have some news about Pastor Linda. Due to her current health conditions and the need for her to recover and focus on her own healing, she has resigned her call for Lutheran Church of Christ the King. Uh, this is uh, a time when we have been dealing with a lot of transition, and so we are prepared to work with more. Um, so the Synod will be helping us as we move forward, helping to provide some uh, assistance in terms of preaching and pastoral care, and we'll let you know how that is going to move forward. Um, but we just wanted to take a moment at this time to really thank Pastor Linda for her service here at LCCK in such a trying and challenging time and wish her the very best um, for everything as she moves forward and as we do as well. So if you would pray with me uh, the Holden Village Prayer. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.